Right, first of all, people might have questions about various aspects of this video. Can I ask you please not to ask questions in the comments section unless you've watched the video all the way through. That means the part where it goes black at the end. Thanks very much. Now this week I'm just going to go through my procedure for cleaning the bike and getting it ready to put the polishes on. This is likely to be quite a long video so go get the kettle on, make yourself a coffee and get yourself comfortable because this video is going to blow your mind. Now last week I showed you what I consider to be the first stage in keeping your bike clean and some people might have thought that that was a bit of a, a gimmick, um, a way of trying to make myself stand out and look different from everybody else etc. This week I'm going to show you that it wasn't. Now this Tuesday afternoon we had some horrendous weather, the heavens opened up and we had an absolute deluge for about three hours. So I, I thought that would be a good time to take my squeaky clean pristine looking T120 out for a ride for an hour and a half in the rain on the filthy roads to get it as dirty as I possibly could so that I could make a video showing you how to go about cleaning it. Now I sought out the deepest, muddiest puddles I could find during this ride. I live in a rural area so I took it down every farm track and made it my point to aim for the muddiest, dirtiest parts of the road on every inch of the journey. Then when I got home, fighting my conscience as I did so, I put the bike away wet and allowed the heat from the engine to cook all that dirt onto the bike ready for me to wash it the following day and this is the result. Now the bike is dirty because I went out of my way to make sure it was but that GT85 and the wax have done a really good job of stopping most of that dirt from sticking to the bike. In fact the bike is nowhere near as dirty as it should be and I reckon that those materials that we put on last week have shrugged off a good 50 or 60% of the dirt that would otherwise have stuck to the bike. So half of the job is already done for you. Now we hear a lot of hype about this two bucket method or two bucket system that people bang on about on the internet. Or as I prefer to call it, the closing the stable door after the horse has bolted method. It is the lesser of many evils and for washing cars I would say it is probably the best way of doing it but there's a far better way of cleaning your bike. Now it's all very well having a bucket with suds in it and a bucket for rinsing the dirt and grit off before you go on to your next panel. But the problem is when you take that nice clean sponge with all those suds on it and put them on your panel, the grit and the dirt is already there on the panel. So what you're doing is you're grinding away at your paintwork with your sponge or your wash mitt and that's where you're doing the damage, right there. You then rinse it off, you get rid of most of that dirt and grit, but then you go on to your next panel and do exactly the same thing. So for me, especially where a bike's concerned, I don't really think that method holds up to close scrutiny. Now, the way I do it is just a method that I've sort of developed and honed over the years. And some people might not agree with it, but I don't care because I like the way that it works. And I think the results validate it. Now it's a three stage cleaning method. The first two stages are non-contact in that you don't physically rub, scrub or brush the bike in any way. You just use the spray on muck off bike cleaner. Now if you do it properly and thoroughly that will remove 99% of the grit and dirt. Your final stage is just your conventional bucket of car shampoo and a wash mitt method. And the main function of this is to just quickly remove any remaining bits of dirt that you might have left and to take away the streaking that might have been left by the muck off bike cleaner. Now I've done the research and I know that muck off bike cleaner is something of a controversial product with some YouTubers telling you that it's full of salt which can lead to rust. Now, I did a bit of research on this as to whether Muckoff does or doesn't contain salt and most of the rumours seem to emanate from various BMW dealerships using it as an excuse to wriggle out of warranty claims for poor paintwork and oxidisation on their engines. 
Now I would rather put my John Thomas in the hands of a madman with a pair of carpet scissors than use chemicals on my bike that are going to cause damage to it. So I thought I would go straight to the horse's mouth. I rang muck off up and asked them the question, does your product contain salt? The answer I got back from them was a categorical no. Muck off bike cleaner was designed specifically without any salt in it. Apparently it is an alkaline chemical mixture, so it doesn't contain any salt whatsoever. And it was designed back in 1994 specifically to replace certain cleaning chemicals that people were using on the bikes that did contain salt. Right, now we've got that out of the way, let's get down to business. First of all, don't buy your muck off bike cleaner in the one litre containers with a pump spray on them because it will cost you a fortune. Do what I do, have a look online, there are plenty of deals out there where you can buy two of the five litre containers for anywhere between 26 and 35 pounds and that's for 10 litres that's going to represent a huge saving over buying them in the one litre containers all you need is a suitable pump spray bottle and just decant the larger bottles into that as you need it make sure that your bike is clock cold before you start washing it so don't wash it straight after a ride give it plenty of time to cool down and likewise if it's a hot sunny day make sure that you've got it somewhere in the shade where it's out of the heat all cleaning chemicals are the same if you put them on a hot surface they dry out instantly and the dirt do the job and the muck off bike cleaner is just the same the first thing you need to do is get a hose pipe and give the bike a good soaking down use this opportunity if you can to rinse as much of the loose grit and dirt away before applying any chemicals make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies but obviously be careful not to squirt too much water into areas that are sensitive like wheel bearings and such like where it could cause a problem in due course further down the line then go around all the lower half of the bike that's your engine your running gear your exhausts etc paying attention as well to your brakes and brake discs and give them all a good liberal coating of muck off bike cleaner don't agitate it in any way just leave it to do its job you will actually see a lot of dirt just sliding off the bike parts now the instructions tell you to leave it for about five minutes but this is a suck it and see situation keep an eye on it and if it starts to show signs of drying out re-wet it with some more cleaner then go over your bike with the hose pipe and rinse it all down now rinse off the entire bike when you do this and then it's time to apply the muck off spray again this time do it just the same as you did before but pay particular attention to areas that show signs of not coming clean with that first wash if necessary and this is probably going to apply to areas like your exhaust and your, and your engine casings where it does get very hot just rub it very gently with your bare hands don't use a cloth with your bare hands you can feel any grit and you can stop immediately and rinse it off with a cloth you can't feel that but just go around and really gently rub the areas that are showing signs that they haven't cleaned up on that first occasion after you've applied the second coat of muck off go over the complete lower half of the bike again just the same as before don't put the muck off on your paint work or your tank again leave the muck off to work for five minutes if you can and then go through the complete rinsing procedure again rinse it very thoroughly go over the bike two or three times with your hose pipe to make sure you've got every bit of that muck off cleaner off it is alkaline based but alkaline itself can ultimately cause damage if it's not rinsed away properly and it's left there to dry out so pay particular attention to making sure that you've rinsed every sud from that muck off cleaner away before you go on to the final stage now to all intents and purposes your bike will now be clean but I like to do this final stage just to make sure that I haven't missed anything and just to remove any streaks or water spots that have been left by the original cleaning process. A splash of car shampoo in half a bucket of cold water is all you need. You can use warm water if you prefer, especially if it's uh, in the winter months. And then starting at the top of the bike and gradually working your way down, 
start to wash and shampoo the bike. Now just use a straight shampoo, not a wash and wax, and make sure that you complete each part properly before moving further down the bike. You don't want to be going back from the lower parts of the bike to the top part of the bike in case of contamination from dirt and grit that you might pick up on your wash mitt. Other than that, just go over the entire bike gently but thoroughly, just as you would during a normal washing procedure. When you're happy that that's been completed properly, it's time to rinse the bike off. Don't go at it with a jet, just a gentle trickle of water. This will help make the drying process easier later on, especially if the bike was pre-waxed as I described last week. The Muck Off Car Shampoo that I use is a very gentle pH balanced soap and it doesn't remove wax or previous dressings or coatings that you might have used. So you should find that the water will just run off which is going to minimise the amount of actual drying that you have to do with a towel when you've finished. Now like everybody else for years I used chamois leathers for drying my bike off and all my vehicles but I don't anymore. I think they became pretty much redundant once microfiber cloths have been invented. The problem with chamois leathers is they do pick up a lot of grit that gets ingrained into them and even though some of the synthetic ones can be washed a lot of that grit stays in there and obviously over time this is going to scratch and swell on your paintwork. Now you can get large microfiber drying towels for use on vehicles just about anywhere and they don't cost a lot of money, two or three pounds at most. I have several of them. Just like your wash mitts and your polishing cloths, these should be washed straight after use and if you drop any on the floor or inadvertently brush the floor while you're doing the lower end of your motorcycle, discard it straight away, put it in the wash and get a fresh one out. It's just not worth the risk of scratching your bike. Likewise, before you start on your bike with any of these cleaning or preparation processes, remove all your jewellery from your wrists and your fingers. That's, you know, rings, wristwatches, bracelets, that kind of thing. Again, they can cause an awful lot of damage if you make one false move. Now, again, drying is like any other process that we've done on the bike. You start at the top and you gradually work your way down to the bottom. That way you minimize any danger of grip pickup, which could damage your paintwork. Get into all the nooks and crannies and dry as much of the bike by hand as you possibly can. It may be worth just taking it off its side stand and tipping it over to its off side for a few seconds and then over onto its near side for a few seconds obviously being careful not to drop it this just dislodges any water from any water traps inside and gets as much of it out prior to starting the drying process once you're confident you've got it as dry as you possibly can not forgetting to take the seat off and dry underneath the seat including the underside of the seat pan follow triumphs instructions in the owner's manual start the engine up and leave it running for five or six minutes to get the engine good and hot get some hot air circulating around the bike and drying off those areas that you can't see or better still if the weather permits put your jacket on and your helmet and take her for a spin now one thing to mention those throttle bodies the fake carburettors on the t120 right at the top of them in the center there is a recessed screw this fills up with water and it will sit there for a long time if you don't remove it just wick it out with a bit of kitchen roll or something like that and then spray a little bit of gt85 in there to make sure that you don't end up with some major problem in the future that's on both sides of the bike so that should be just about it. Obviously, allow your bike to cool down fully before attempting to put GT85 on the engine or doing any polishing. Because if any of those microfiber cloths uh, catch your exhaust system, your engine or your downpipes while it's hot, they'll melt straight onto it and make a really ugly mess that's a nightmare to sort out later on. Okay, so this video didn't blow your mind. It was the only way I could think of of actually getting people to watch the video right to the end. Now, gloss black automotive finishes are probably the worst colours that is possible to get for showing up scratches and imperfections. And I think I can honestly say that after a year, this bike is still in 
genuine showroom condition cosmetically and I can honestly say that I've never been anywhere near this bike with any restorative polishes or abrasives to try and bring the finish back. This is exactly as it was when I picked it up. This might not be a groundbreaking method but it's common sense and it really does work and I personally think it's a lot less effort than messing around scrubbing out every nook and cranny on the bike trying to get it clean but also doing a fair bit of damage in the process now I will leave links for the cheapest of the two products that I've used today that I can find on Amazon but can I utter a word of caution here it's come to my attention recently that some of these retailers or manufacturers may be monitoring my videos and what I've noticed is that I'll put the cheapest price up and then a few days later when I am checking my links I found that they've raised the price exponentially to take advantage of the situation. Don't accept these prices as being the best prices around. Use the link purely as a reference to make sure you're getting the right product and then have a good check around to make sure that it isn't cheaper elsewhere. Right, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. I'm not sure what next week's video is going to entail. I've not really got that far ahead of myself yet. But there will be a video as always. And until then, I'll see you next time. Right, it's finished. Now you can turn it off.